Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to deep dive into the last in, first out, or what's known as LIFO, inventory cost flow assumption. So here we go, last in, first out, or also known as LIFO, as I mentioned. In this method of accounting for inventory cost flows, we are going to lump all of our inventory together. In other words, we're not going to track it all individually. We're not going to give it separate barcodes. If we're dealing with, say, um, um, five laptops that are all the same model, but were purchased at two or three different times at different prices, um, we're just going to throw them all on the shelf together. We're going to have them all just listed as inventory with the total balance on our balance sheet. We're not going to track them individually. What we are going to do is we're going to make an assumption about how those items sell. We're going to assume that when a customer comes and buys one of those five laptops, they bought the most recent one that we purchased. In other words, the cost of goods sold is going to be based on the value of whatever the most recent of the five laptops that we bought was. We assume the more recent thing, the thing we bought last, is the thing the customer wants first. Okay? Now, counterpoint to that is, well, if they're buying what we assume is last, then that means that anything we have left in our inventory at the end of an accounting period is going to be based on the value of whatever we bought first. We're assuming the oldest stuff is the stuff we still have. Now, what are the pros and cons of doing this? Well, one pro is that for businesses where selling newer goods first is common, think technology, think fashion, where people want the hottest, latest, greatest item, for businesses such as that, um, this, this kind of makes sense, right? You assume customers are going to buy the most recent thing first, and this allows them to, to have a practical applicability. In other words, the business can make this assumption and without being too far incorrect, um, they can have a general idea of what the value of their inventory truly is, what the value of their cost of goods sold truly is, even though um, um, it, it may not match true reality. Um, I say practical application because it's very difficult to track every single item you have individually. It's very difficult to barcode uniquely every item. It's very difficult to code every item in the system. It's, it's resource intensive. It's compute intensive. And so this is more practical. You make an assumption about the way things are flowing through the system. Now, what's the shortcoming? Well, as I've kind of already hinted at, the shortcoming is um, your COGS and your ending inventory, they're going to be inaccurate. They're not going to be perfectly correct because you're assuming what people bought. You're not tracking what they actually bought, and that's going to create some discrepancies. There's also a couple of extra requirements that I'm not going to discuss in detail here, but that go into using a last-in, first-out system, and that is you've got to disclose to investors something called the LIFO reserve, which is a way of just saying, hey, if we had used a different method, specifically first-in, first-out, here's what our inventory would have been valued at. So you've got to report that to investors. And you also have this LIFO conformity rule, which means that you know, whatever you're doing for financial purposes, you've also got to mimic for tax purposes. So there's some extra regulation that goes around um, using LIFO, um, but it is an option that companies have, should it make sense for that company. All right, let's see an example of this at work. FlyerCore purchases inventory on June 1st, June 2nd, June 11th, and June 21st for these prices respectively. On June 25th, FlyerCore sells the inventory purchased on the 2nd and the 11th. So I... I've told you in this example, just for, for, for our own knowledge, that it's these two pieces right here, the 1,200 and the 900. That's what they've actually sold. But remember, um, we're playing with LIFO. And in LIFO, you're not really caring what you actually sold. You're not keeping track of that. But for example purposes, we're, we're going to be aware of that. What is the company's COGS and ending inventory at the end of June? Well, under a LIFO system, we assume whatever we as a company bought last, we sold first. And so these last two purchases, 900 and 600, that's what we're going to assume the customer bought. So 900, 600 for a cost of goods sold of 1,500. We're going to assume then that if the customers bought those two, they must have the 800 and the 1,200 still sitting in our ending inventory. 
so 800, 1200 for a total of $2,000. Now notice, this is not fully accurate because we know that we really sold the 1200 and the 900. So we should have cost of goods sold of 2100. We do not. We know that what we really have left is the 800 and the 600. So we should have an ending balance of 1400. We do not. These inaccuracies, while not desirable, are considered an okay trade-off to allow for practical applicability, to give companies a way to measure their inventory that is not overly burdensome by making assumptions. But those assumptions do yield some inaccuracies on your financial statements. All right, that's it for last in, first out. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.